The Philadelphia Eagles are the hottest team in the NFL and get a well-deserved off week with the league's best record of 8-1. This is the fifth time in franchise history the Eagles have started the season 8-1 and one or better, and the team advanced to the NFL Championship game or the Super Bowl in each of the previous four. The New Orleans Saints, meanwhile, get no such break as they take the league's longest active win streak at 6 to Buffalo this Sunday. New Orleans is the third team in the Super Bowl era to start 0-2 and, and win its next six games, with two other teams, the 93 Cowboys and 07 Giants, both going on to win the Super Bowl. We'll tell you who we like to win the Super Bowl, as well as a look at Week 10's best matchups as the OFN NFL Preview Show with Tony Mejia on Prime Sports Network starts now. All right, it is Thursday, the 9th of November, 2017. I'm your host, Greg DePama. I try week number 10 is upon us, so we're going to go through all the games and let you know what we have in store for you regarding the latest injury updates, trends, odds, picks, and such. And uh, we will also take a look at some of the uh, latest futures and uh, see who we liked when the season began and uh, who we may like right now. So let's welcome in my uh, co-host to the show. Uh, he is an independent sports columnist and exclusive handicapper at VegasInsider.com, Tony Mejia. So, uh, Tony, what do you think about week nine in the NFL, the first, uh, the, the last week of the first half legitimately of the season? Week nine was solid. Um, my first close to 5-0 and in the Super Contest, but I went 4 and a half and 0 because of the backdoor cover that the Dolphins uh, found a way to not <laughs> against the Raiders. With, with the two-point conversion. Hey, real quick, because because of uh, – you know, I have to do this. I do this all the Uh-oh. time at my house. All right. So new, it's New Orleans, not New Orleans. And my girlfriend says oh, I have to say all new, the time. I have to say New Orleans? It's New Orleans, yes. Oh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Oh, and, and if you're local, it's New Orleans. Ah. But it's New Orleans. New Orleans is the way that, Is that like, E-E-N-S? New Orleans? L-E-E-N-S? Yeah, exactly. We're, 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 we make leans on our, on our picks, but yeah, it's New Orleans. All right. I kind of... Well, does everybody in the country say it, New Orleans, except people no, in New, no, New Orleans? No, no, not at all. It's, it's, it's like one of those things where Caribbean and, and Caribbean, but like uh, <laughs> that, that is 50-50, and that I can get with, but New or- it's New Orleans. New Orleans. It's like Rajan and New Ray Orleans. Rondo. It's Rajan. Rajan. New Orleans. Okay. I've learned something here go. today. And I'll need that for it. the next 30 years of my career. <laughs> New Orleans. New Orleans. All right. New Orleans. New Orleans works. New Orleans, Noel. New Orleans. And, and Nur- they, they, they even call New Orleans New Orleans. And, and New Orleans. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. I promise you that. Well, New Orleans is hot, man. And we'll get getting into them in a little bit. Who would have thought that? I, I wouldn't have even thought that they'd be 6-2 and two at this point on a six-game winning streak after they started 0-2. But uh, still, uh, I think that, you know, and, and we did talk about and wonder whether or not the defense improvement in the preseason would move over to the regular season. And I think th- the reason why I thought it could was personnel-wise. I think if you just looked at a team in the preseason and they played well, okay, well, it is preseason. Uh, one of the reasons was definitely they added, uh, of course, Lattimore in the secondary. Uh, boy, Okafor has been a big addition for them. You know, sometimes a player like that is a rotation guy in one spot, and he comes to New Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans! And then he goes ahead. and See, at least I got it because I realized it. So, uh, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, it, it works, especially when he gets to work alongside a guy like Cameron Jordan. Uh, unfortunately, Anzalone was hurt early in the season. That would have been a nice uh, player to, to watch uh, this season. Yeah. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, there's better defensive personnel. Dennis Allen's a good coordinator. They're running the ball more as well, which also alleviates some pressure on the defense. So I don't think what we're seeing is a big shock. I don't think they're a top defense, but they're a good enough defense with a good running game and a heck of a quarterback. Yeah, no question. I've, I've got them in my top five this week, uh, and had them leapfrog the Rams who I had them behind entering the week and the Rams obviously didn't do anything to, uh, to, to lose their top, well, I guess I had them like top eight, but um, to lose that ranking and destroying the Giants. But, I mean, what I'm seeing from the Saints is so fantastic. And, yeah, I mean, you add a top ten corner, because Marshawn Lattimore is a top ten corner, uh, he, and, and you put him in there. Uh, Vaccaro's healthy. He's exceptional. Uh, so all of a sudden, those secondary issues that have hindered you all, oh, I don't know, 
10 years, 15 years. Since the Super Bowl. Uh, no longer exists. And then you, you're absolutely right about the running game. You, you, you've got multiple options to kill clock and run time and, and really move the, the football the way that, um, you know, the the Saints are, are doing so right now. And, and all of a sudden you have an elite football team. Yeah, and, uh, and and Carolina might be the only team now that uh, might be able to knock them off, but I still think, uh, look, uh, New Orleans is playing a lot better than they are. So, uh, But, uh, look, it's one half of the season basically done, and for some teams they played nine games. Uh, it's still a long way to go. Uh, but uh, that was uh, – see, I've had a couple of good sleepers. One was Philly winning the division. The other was Atlanta as a wild card. Um, I, I've, I've missed out. I think the ones that I missed out on were Indianapolis, and that's really because I thought luck would have been back by now. But that was a gamble, you know, that he would have been back, and that's what happens right. when you put some money in futures at fifty to one at the beginning of the season, hoping that luck will be in there. And you know what? If luck would have returned in about three or four weeks, uh, maybe they would have had a shot at the division with Deshaun Watson going down. Uh, uh, but Jacksonville, of course, has outplayed uh, everybody's expectations. Of course, I also had Baltimore in there, but the Yonda injury really killed me at fifty to one. Um, and, uh, and then also I didn't really think too much of Kansas city, put them more like a second or third place team. And of course, uh, they have really, um, uh, exceeded uh, expectations on, on your end, taking a look at your, uh, preseason, uh, picks, uh, you had Tennessee winning the South. So that still looks like a, a possibility there. Uh, and, uh, you know, besides the, uh, the, the, the normal picks, you know, Pittsburgh and the Patriots, uh, Oakland, of course, we talked about their disappointments at this uh, at this point at this time. Can't really judge Green Bay without Rodgers. We both thought Atlanta would win the South, so uh, I, I'm I think you're done with them too, right? No, I'm not done with them yet. Uh, you know, I think it's <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Okay. Um, you know, at, at this point, I think New Orleans is the class of that comp, uh, of, of that division, but Atlanta should still be able to figure it out. We've seen it in flashes, like when when Matt Ryan didn't listen to Sarkeesian and then actually improvised and led them on that on that late drive. Um, you know, two weeks ago, I thought we saw flashes of the beginning of what we're we're going to see down the stretch because there's too much talent on that team for that offense to fail. But um, you know, I I think my biggest regret uh, and huge dismiss is the Raiders. Uh, you know, even even with their marginal success uh, in, in beating uh, Miami in Miami, uh, I think that that's a team that's done. That's a team that like has way too much to overcome over the next few months. Where um, I don't, I don't even believe in them anymore. Like I, I, I don't know what would have caused me, considering they won the game, yeah. to be like, okay, I'm, I'm not way off on the Raiders. Uh -huh. But what I saw that night didn't didn't uh appease no I, <laughs> even though they won I, mean, I know it's a marginal football yeah it's it's uh that's the thing is that i think the buffalo game was it for me it, is that i just it was like come on how can you not use that game as a way to turn more like into the team that we thought you were when the season began uh, and that just didn't happen. And when that didn't happen, I, I, I kind of lost uh, all hope uh, that uh, they were going to try to, you know, try, look, they, there's still games to be played, but I, I can see why you would kind of lose all interest in the Raiders who are right now. Uh, what are they? They got the off week this week. Uh, they're sitting at uh, 30 to one to win the Super Bowl, which is a little bit down since last week because they won. Uh, but I agree. I don't think there's any way right now that, that you can think that the Oakland Raiders would have that good of a second half to win the Super Bowl. I think you'd be throwing your money away. What is wrong with Amari Cooper? I mean, like, look, they throw him the football. He's supposed to catch it. It 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 it's it gone down to Crabtree. I think Crabtree really enjoyed being that guy because uh, I mean, obviously Cooper's way better and and, and a top five pick. Uh, and then yet Crabtree was outshining him. And I think you know some some guys really need that type of influence to be like okay well i'm better than this guy and now we're both elite uh and now they're both terrible and like you know it, it, it seems like uh, cooper's in his own head and now crabtree's dropping the ball every other time that he, he's thrown it so i have no idea jared cook's your most reliable receiver i mean really <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty it's, bad it's, it's unbelievable 
Yeah, and I still I think it's uh, I think they maybe even need a change to tell you the truth, maybe uh, on offense uh, because as we talked about, I don't know how you. I mean, they basically just use Cordell Patterson as like a gimmicky player. All right, we'll hand the ball off to him and, and he'll return kicks. I mean, the guy started to actually play better at receiver for the Vikings in his final year than he had the previous two years combined when he had kind of lost whatever it was that he had in his rookie season. You know, he wasn't whether it was dedication. Uh, discipline, whatever. Uh, he started to play better. Uh, so I thought, okay, he's he's developing into a receiver now. He goes to Oakland. Boy, with with Derek Carr, that's going to be something else. He he never get. I mean, he's lucky he gets a reception a game. I, I don't understand it. I, I just, I mean, there's too many weapons on that offense for them to not get creative with guys uh, like Richard and with Patterson. No question. And you're absolutely right. And that's the, that's the whole point because we see. The Kansas City game, and granted, it was so awful the way that the game was extended, but they pulled it off. And even if they hadn't pulled it off, we saw them take chances and feel com- We saw Carr feel comfortable yeah. finally pushing the ball down the field, and then we didn't see it again. That, and that's the point. If, even if they'd have lost to the Dolphins, or they'd have lost to the Dolphins, they'd be done. But even if they had, and and taking chances and look great doing it, uh, I feel more confident in what I anticipated than what we're seeing right now, which is basically uh, an offense that prefers to be conservative. I don't understand that the offensive line isn't terrible. Like, Penn is up to speed now. Why are you doing this? And uh, I, I have no answer. Yeah, I think that's it. It's about being maybe a little bit too conservative. And even though Cook is – see, I think Cook just gets way too much, too many targets. I, I don't get it. I mean, there's too many targets to Cook and not enough targets down the field. So Yeah, but who's, whose fault is that? I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to put that on Carr without knowing no. the full story. No, I agree. I that's mean, because when he gets him the ball, he gets him the ball. But, like, uh, you're absolutely right about both Patterson and Richard. Uh, and, and then, yeah, I mean, like, if you're looking at Amari Cooper and trying to get him the football, he's, he still had, there, there are still too many instances where he fails because he's not getting enough touches. Like, you know, you, you, you get the, you get the ball and then you move on. You know, I'm not saying throw the ball every time. I'm sure. with Richard there, but like, there's, there's clear instances where they're playing vanilla way too often. And and look, even and at least for the first time, the only good thing about the game against Miami is for the first time all year, Marshawn Lynch ran the ball. So right. there's that, and we'll find out whether or not that can continue. You do wonder, though, whether or not – you know how sometimes you – you have a certain way about your offense and you bring in a guy that uh, is supposed to help you out with with a weakness and then you end up uh, – wind up uh, – you, you end up kind of uh, trying to fit that player into your offense too much. And I wonder if that's actually been part of the problem is that, you know, Murray was just a runner and that's all he was. He was a body, but they didn't count on him. They didn't try to force the game in too much to Murray – and so Derek Carr was pretty much the entire offense. It's almost like so. It's sort of like last week with Seattle. I got the feeling that even though it looked like, and I think they did have more success running the ball than we've seen them have success before, it almost looked like it me it hurt them because Russell Wilson wasn't throwing the ball all the time, and every time he did go back to pass, he was running for his life anyway. But then again, when isn't he running for his life? But it almost oh, seemed trust, like trust they me, were. I have thoughts on that. Well, okay, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, when we get to the Seahawks. Okay, when we get to the game. Well, here's the game. I mean, the game kind of kicks us off. We might as well go ahead and get into it because they're a six-point favorite. Uh, You did mention Earl Thomas last week, but the defense really wasn't the issue except for the last uh, series, which, of course, Washington was able to march down the field and score on the big play to Doxon that set them up for the touchdown. Earl Thomas is out again tonight. Uh, Richard Sherman's also banged up, so keep an eye on that. But we are talking about Drew Stanton, so it's the running game. Peterson got a boatload of carries last week, and that's what he's going to have to do again. I'm not sure they're going to be able to do that. Keep in mind, the dog in this series has won four straight games, yeah. uh, and uh, that means Arizona, of course, being the dog. And here's the interesting thing. As awful as the season has been for Arizona, have you ever seen a team play this bad at 4-4, four and four, and yet if they win this game, they're going to be tied with Seattle at this point in the season? I can't even believe they're 4-4 four and four with a chance to tie Seattle tonight. Yeah, there's no question. That's a big, big uh, development for the, the, the way that that coaching staff has been treated. 
because we have castigated them for the offensive line play. Uh, and Bruce Arians is, I mean, like, I, you know, we we would have had this conversation a couple of years ago and we would not have blamed Bruce Arians. I think a lot of people have this year and it's unfair. Uh, but the, the, I mean, the bottom line is like that, that's a, that's a team that now has an offense that has its wide receivers healthy for the first time, a contingent that like, um, really has had at least one guy banged up every week. So Drew Stanton gets to be the beneficiary instead of Carson Palmer. Mm-hmm. Um, Adrian Peterson, who should not touch the ball 30 times tonight, but if he does, if he carries 30 plus, would do that for only the second time in his entire career. Uh, and please don't do that on a short week. I, just, I don't want to take that back on Arian. Uh, but the, the bottom line is, is, yeah, it's a team that can move to five and four and completely salvage the season. Um, and it's, it's funny, the discrepancy between, uh, between the odds right now, right now I think uh, Seattle is eight to nine, nine to uh, yeah, I think it's eight to nine or, or seven to eight, something like that. So basically, more than an even money favorite to win the NFC West, and uh, the Cardinals are thirty to one. And if the Cardinals win tonight, <laughs> they're even in the standings. Where are the Rams? Rams are uh, I don't know three to one, four to one. Is there a second I mean, choice? Uh, yeah, still even with the lead. Wow. I, I I think that's a pretty good play because we, we, we you know we we've said for three weeks that we believe that the Rams are in it for the long haul and they just keep winning. So yeah, no, I, I, I don't I don't think there's any question that they're legitimate. Yeah, I just think that everybody expects that the second half of the season, especially now with Dwayne Brown on board, that the Seahawks will get it together. But yeah. I, and I do expect the Seahawks to get it together tonight. Yeah, I do too. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah. It, when I when I did my little game on on the spread. I'm like, I'm going to go four and four on the road, right? No, wait, odds makers will get, no, odds makers will get six. They'll take six. And that's what they took. So, six, um, yeah. yeah. That so worries we'll me see. just a uh, little bit, uh, but not enough where I would go, no, uh, I'm not going to take this game. Uh, again, maybe the dog thing concerns me a little bit in a divisional matchup just recently. That That thing kind of sometimes does work. Um, but I think it actually works in your favor going with Seattle, considering how poorly they played last week. I expect a huge bounce back tonight. Right. Yeah. And, and, and again, I, I think that the odds makers took as much as they could. I think if anybody, if, if you gave the full seven, the, the Cardinals become a no brainer. So they basically what came in and said, we're, we're going to need all seven to win. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's a full, full touchdown. You really don't see that in matchups between four and five and five, four teams. Yeah. Uh, and especially with the with, with the uh, with the favorite on the road. Yeah. So that's true. yeah, we'll yeah. see. I mean, but they have to take advantage of standing. And you hit it on. Uh, you know, you mentioned right in front what the key is. It's Earl Thomas, and he's out. Of- yeah. Yeah, that would be the concerning thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, like you mentioned, it, if if Carson Palmer was healthy, we would be still on that. Hey, look out for Arizona because they are back to being healthy on offense. And they were looking good until the Europe Europe game, uh, and then the injury, uh, and then we all started to panic. Uh, and uh, but you know the San Francisco game kind of bailed them out. Uh, uh, but there's only one week, and we'll find out for real. By the way, Arizona has rotated losses and wins all season, so they have not had a two game winning streak, and they have not had a two game losing streak all season long. All right, uh, so the big game for the second straight week is for the Dallas Cowboys. Last week, uh, they finally, finally played like the team that I saw last year. Uh, that was the first time I saw the Cowboys play this year where I went, okay, now I could actually believe in the Dallas Cowboys uh, as a serious playoff team because there's no Aaron Rodgers to worry about. And there's really only a couple of teams that I think you really should worry about. One of them is the team they're playing next week in a in the, the biggest Sunday night football game of the season, the Cowboys and the Eagles. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Seattle the team we just talked about. So, uh, you know, Dallas is probably a, a pretty good uh, play, actually, uh, for the Super Bowl. 16 to one. Not bad, considering how. Uh, the NFC is compared to what it was just about a month ago and, bef- and before the Cowboys were, before they've won three straight, including their impressive win against Kansas City. But again, it's all about Zeke Elliott. I will say this. If the reason that they're a three-point dog today is because of Zeke, uh, then you know what? Uh, 
I don't know. Maybe I'd be okay with that, even though three points either way, I don't think really matters. It would be a win, a win. You would think you're not worried about the spread, and I'd rather have Zeke and give three than have than not have Zeke and get three. Uh, but look, I, I just I don't care if Zeke's playing. I just don't. Uh, I think Atlanta is is no. I, I'm sorry. They're, they're they're completely emotionally, psychologically messed up. And Julio Jones can't even hold on the balls in the end zone. Uh, they, hmm. they're just, they're out of it. I'm sorry. I just, I after the Cowboys played the game of their season, I can't imagine that they're going to lose this game to a team that is psychologically damaged like the Falcons are. I, I had a solid week last week and it would have been a, a great week had the over come in if Julio Jones gets. Oh, oh no, that's good. Nice. Yeah. Cause uh, I mean, obviously it came, it came to a touchdown. <laughs> Look, um, I, I'm with you on that. I don't know that that can continue. I really don't. I mean, like, that looked weird. It looked strange. It looked like uh, we were in the twilight zone with that stuff. Like, you, and, and I, I heard somebody try to make excuses for, like, how Jones was injured. And look what he's doing. <laughs> look what he's doing when he's injured. He's still wide open, and he's dropping the ball. So, yeah, yeah no, please no. spare me. Spare me that. Uh, and I think that what we're what we're going to see going forward is I think the, the Falcons pick it up, but um, I'm not as uh, uh, I'm not as gung ho on uh, Elliott being out and the Cowboys still being able to do this. We'll see. I'm gonna. Uh, this is a, a, the perfect uh, stage to see if for, we don't get any injunctions tomorrow <laughs> and uh, on Friday for our listeners. And uh, and Elliot remains out because now we get to see what Alfred Morris can do, what McFadden will do uh, with an offensive line that has improved, and and that yeah it did look like itself last week. And I mean I think what we saw last week was um, I think everybody's right on Des Bryant. Des Bryant as a number one is probably a number two, uh, and you need a more diverse offense which Dak Prescott can bring you uh, based on his elusiveness. I think he, you know he can he can get the ball to Cole Beasley when he needs to as he as he's proven. Uh, and then he can spread the ball around if he keeps drives alive and, and plays alive <clears throat> with his legs. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I think the Cowboys are – I mean, what we saw last week from the Cowboys was also them being the healthiest that they've been this season. So maybe it does continue. Yeah, they definitely have to make sure Zeke uh, is back in time uh, for the postseason for them to be legitimate. Right now it would be week 16. Yeah, and and so uh, they have to make sure that that happens if they're going to be a true Super Bowl team, and make sure that Sean Lee stays healthy. So they do yep. that, then yeah, uh, they're legit at sixteen to one. By the way, not even looking at, I mean, I was just giving my thoughts on this game just by what I've seen. But if you look at the numbers, Cowboys three and zero straight up and against the spread in their last three. Falcons one and four straight up, zero and five against the spread in their last five. So. Come on. Uh, by the way, Atlanta's next week will be at Seattle on Monday night football. So uh, that is that could be a big game next week uh, if Atlanta wins uh, and beats the Cowboys, who will be hosting the Eagles on Sunday night football next week. All right. Now let's get to uh, Nolens as they are in Buffalo riding that six game winning streak. And the Bills coming off. Uh, uh, I mean, just imagine the Bills fan. Uh, you're a Bills fan. You've watched this underachieving team start out the season five and two, uh, small market. Uh, nobody really believes it. you're a phony five and two. You go to national TV. You're about to prove to everybody just how good and legit you are, and you play the worst game of the season. Uh, but right. maybe they yeah. bounce back. They've had, you know, it's and we've. I've just said Seattle. I expect them to bounce back. Maybe Buffalo. Maybe they bounce back. They're four and zero at home. You know, we know how tough it is to play there. A dome team like New Orleans goes to Buffalo. So uh, this could be a tough spot for the Saints. But the Saints have just buried everybody recently on their six-game winning streak, winning by a 182-90 to 90 margin, all six wins by eight points or more. Yeah, th this is one of those games where I have to condition myself not to look too much into it because now we have two teams that, like, we weren't sure of at, like, at, at, any, at, at any level, like the, the, the Saints defense, the Saints running game, the Bills passing game, Bills defense. We're not sure about any of it, and now they're going to get face off against each other, and the winner's going to look really good. Uh, and and as far as Buffalo goes, you know you've got Jordan Matthews healthy, 
Uh, you've got Calvin Benjamin now with a week of practice, and so he's going to play. Yeah. Uh, and, and, yeah, and you've got Tyrod Taylor coming off a game where he looked great. So, and, and obviously, Shady is the straw that serves the drink. So, I mean, to me, it, 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 it's, it's an opportunity uh, to really shine against the defense that I respect. I mean, I don't care if anybody else calls it, I mean, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a weird defense that, like, is just per- performing right now. That, that to me, looks like a legitimate defense in New Orleans. And uh, if they, if uh, you're right about Dennis Allen, solid coordinator, so respect due. And I'm going to tip the cap. And if if, uh, if Buffalo is able to do what they what they need to do in this game, they have the personnel to do it now. Yeah. And they didn't. Outside of Clay being out, um, they're pretty good. And Clay's been practicing now. Uh, this week maybe he gets in there who knows uh zay jones gets his first touchdown pass and then he injures himself so right. we're not sure if he's gonna play uh cordy glenn uh who has played over the last three games uh he's missed some practice this week and they're wondering whether or not that had to do with the, you know the two games in five days uh maybe that's just resting him making sure that he's ready to go on Sunday, but they won games without him anyway. So I'm not so sure that's a big deal. Teron Armstead is also uh, still banged up. Uh, he hasn't been healthy all year. So uh, right. there's, there's some other injuries to keep in mind, but I agree with you when it's just one of these situations, which is why, look, I, I've taken the saints uh, a lot uh, recently, on, especially on this win streak. And if you have, then I just think you just keep rolling with them. That's what I would do uh, because I do think they're better than Buffalo. So like you said, I'm not going to put I'm not too much thought into it. I'm just going to say, who's the better team? Who's been hot? Who do I like? Who have I won with the last three or four weeks? I'm sticking with them. That's the way I would do it. But that's, you know, if you're with me and you've kind of gone that route, uh, but if you're just kind of somebody that hasn't believed in the Saints yet, then I'm not so sure this is the game to start. I think you might want to wait another week because sure. this is a tough one. Yeah, no question. I I have not uh, looked at this game that way. I would say that um, I believe in Taylor. I would do the legwork on how the Saints have done against running quarterbacks because obviously last week, Jameis, uh, first of all, Jameis isn't a running quarterback, but um, he's not, not himself. I think they've run into a, a, a couple of situations that have benefited them. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I want, I want to see, obviously, uh, Buffalo, I would trend toward that direction given the extra preparation time. So, um, and I do believe in their coaching staff. This is going to be such a fun result. Um, uh, you know, that I almost hope it's not a blowout so we can dissect it further. All right. And by the way, Sean McDermott, who knows Drew Brees well from his days in Carolina. So that uh, is something to keep an eye on, too. Buffalo will be out west next week, taking on the Chargers, and the Saints will be at home against Washington. By the way, the Saints are 10-1 to 1 now to win the Super Bowl, so uh, that is uh, way down from their preseason number, uh, which was 40-1. to 1. Uh, So I didn't mind taking them at 40-1, to 1, uh, but 10-1, uh, to 1, nah, I did, no. I'd rather take the Cowboys at 16-1. to 1. So 10 to one's a little low, even though I just told you that trend where uh, the 0 and 2, uh, the, the two teams that have started 0 and 2 to win six straight, have both wound out winning Super Bowl. So uh, oh, that's interesting. will it be 2 and 1 or 3 and 0? We'll see. All right. Uh, next up, Minnesota and Washington and the Redskins, as we mentioned, will be in uh, Nolens next week. And uh, the Vikings. Now, this whole thing about Case Keenum is really interesting with Case Keenum and Bradford now looking like this, right. he's out and Bridgewater coming back. And uh, I was very intrigued by. We'll be talking about Teddy Bridgewater starting the game week. Well, don't, don't, don't fool you, son. What's that? I said, we'll be talking about Teddy Bridgewater starting a game by week 12. Yeah, I think you're right. And that's kind of why I think we're seeing, we're hearing the writing on the wall because I was a little bit surprised that Mike Zimmer. Uh, so much so that I actually played the soundbite on the Jet Show because of how Todd Bowles has been like like his comment regarding the when they finally asked him about it uh, two weeks ago uh, after the Atlanta loss. His comment regarding the quarterback situation was, uh, "I've I I I saw my quarterbacks in the summer, and and I know you know it was basically I I I had to look at my guys in the summer and I know who I like and I'm sticking with McCown." It's like some stupid asinine. I mean, who cares about what you saw in the summer? 
Uh, where, but you know what, though? Um, because uh, I, I, I absolutely know how you feel about this. And as Jets fans, you're, you're, you're right in terms of, like, wanting to see Petty. That man wants to save his job. <laughs> so, if, well, that's if, why there if, has if, to be if, a relationship with the GM. There has to be some sort of communication with the two of them that understand each other. That what are we doing here? Are, are we because I, I honestly think Bowles has earned himself enough respect at this point where I would think he's going to be back now. And I would then have that conversation with him and say, look, you know, yeah, you're right. I think you're going to be back. Let's just play this way. What's uh, but we can't bury ourselves at eight and eight and not see the young kids. We got we Absolutely. got to see what we got, because I got to know if I got to draft a quarterback in the first round next year. You know, no, you that 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 is 100 percent what the way I would handle it if I was McCagnon and uh, the way it should be handled. We'll see if it's handled that way. Cause yeah, I mean like, look, I, 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 I sat here and agreed with you on, on needing to see Petty. And, uh, and then, yeah, we're, we're looking at really a, a ridiculously good season yeah. from a, a guy that we didn't expect it from. And then if Bowles is telling you, well, I saw this this summer and this is going to save my gig. And he, he, he's been right. He's been proven right. So now next, you know, they lose two more games, you know, yeah, playing it straight up. True. And then, yeah, you have to have that conversation. Yeah. You would think that they, especially when we get into the Tampa game in a minute. Yeah. That would, uh, that would change everything. But I, I played it because uh, I played the soundbite on the show because Zimmer, now here he's got a quarterback that's winning every game and they're, they're in first place. They're six and two. They're going to go to the playoffs basically at this point. And he's being, oh, well, you know, I, we'll see. I got to, you know, I'm not sure yet. Uh, and it's like, wait a second. I mean, he's got a winning quarterback on his team, and he's actually trying to let everybody know. I don't know. So it's, it, it was like, well, that's what your coach actually, you know, it's, it's actually like, you know, he was being truthful, and which is kind of refreshing, you know. Uh, we're right. bowls, I think, which is kind of dismissing the idea just in case. You know, he didn't want to hear any quarterback controversy because, like you said, yeah, in two or three weeks, if they lose, then he'll make a change anyway. But he's not going to say that now. But, you know, it was refreshing to hear Zimmer kind of be honest about it. But I was also taken aback by it because I think Keenum has played good enough with Bridgewater not playing in almost two years that I think that he should deserve the benefit of the doubt unless they lose a couple of games. I would say this. I would say that it, 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 it looks entirely true that Case Keenum is a top two to three backup. Backup, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and at the same time, and it, it, people said it. People, people said it, but like jokingly, it was funny. Like, I, cause I, I, I I'm, I'm friends with Chris Thomason. I read his his timeline all the time. He does a great job covering the Vikings, and they basically said, "Wow, Bridgewater came out here looking like Joe Montana." <laughs> And they were joking, uh-huh. but at the same, but at the same time, like the, the respect for Teddy Bridgewater on that team yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. And if 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 you get Stephon Diggs back healthy, mm-hmm. and and he utilizes Thielen, and technically, you know, the, the tight end is elite and hasn't really been elite this season. Uh you 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 have a situation where like they can they can vault off that momentum. That 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 defense is top five in the league. There's yeah, no sure. other way around it. Yeah, like that that could be an NFC champion team. Could be if Bridgewater shows up looking like Teddy Bridgewater because he is better than Keenan. Oh yeah, yeah um, no but, question about but we'll, that. We'll yeah. just have to see. Yeah, no question about that. And I understand why they would do well, why they would go with Bridgewater uh, because uh, yeah, that's the thing. You can you're going to win the division with Keenum. Maybe you win a playoff game. But you're not going to the Super Bowl. You're not winning a Super Bowl with Case Keenum. Uh, there's no, you know, cook in the backfield. Maybe if you had him, I'd feel a little bit better about them with Keenum. But you need your quarterback uh, at Minnesota. Yeah. That's You need a difference maker, and Bridgewater has that in him. And that's going to be also interesting to see. Maybe Minnesota is also saying to themselves, hey, we got to know what we got here, too, in Bridgewater. Because we got to know sure. if this kid can play. Because if he can, then we got to know if we got to keep him around here and decide on Bradford or Bridgewater. Because there's so many other teams out there that might be going, "Hey, I'll take a chance on Bridgewater." Do you do you know Bradford's contract situation? Because I don't. No, I think it was. Uh, I I think he they. I think it's another. I think he's got at least another year. I think so. Wow. I'll have to check it up. But I don't know if he's a free agent. I. Uh, but yeah, I mean that is. Because uh, he's done this year, it seems. I mean they've. 
James, he's going to see James Andrews. They're going to recommend a thing. They've got Bridgewater and Keenum. It doesn't doesn't seem to me like he's going to. He, we'll see him again. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think it's. I think he's done. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I and and it, boy, that's that's tough. I mean, for a guy that finally uh, has like the game of his career on opening day, and he's done now. And by the way, he'll be a free agent next year. So okay. he's done. Oh, yeah. Um, well, he'll be available for another team. You know, if he can show that he's healthy, Sam Bradford will be somebody else's. Um, yeah. I mean, at this point, I, I, he's, he's the best quarterback on the market. <laughs> he would be. Yeah. Funny well, inside. So as far as this game is concerned, uh, I think the quarterback situation could be a little bit of a distraction. Uh, the Vikings have won four straight. I'm looking at this as uh, Washington has to i'm thinking washington going even though they haven't played very well at home uh matter of fact they're, they've won they're one in five against the spread in their last six home games uh so they haven't been a great home team and that would concern me a little bit but uh i think the win last week has to give them some sort of motivation going back home and they should be healthier of course than last week so maybe they start right. getting some of these guys back that I'm going to go ahead and take them as uh, I think they're like a one point dog. So they might end up a pick them. Maybe it, I mean, what do you think? Do you think they'll end up as a pick them or a two point dog? Or uh, if it went either way, which way would you guess? Two point dog or pick them? <clears throat> uh, give me one second. I'm going to look at the public numbers. Because if it's one right uh, now. Yeah, uh, um, all right. Uh, right now it is uh, 58% of public money is on Washington. Ah, so, so there you go. So yeah, at this point, so at this point I would them. say that it's, it's probably going to be Washington favorite. Right. Uh, yeah. or, no, I mean, it's sort of favorite because they were, they were one and a half point favorite. Right? One and a half now. Okay. So yeah, what's that? They're one and a half now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one and a half. Uh, I mean, look, you've got, you've got uh, an injury report as long, as long as I've seen, uh, and the season, like on anybody, Vernon Davis, Jordan Reed, now Paul, Monte Nicholson, Spencer Long, Sean Laval, Jameson Crowder, uh, Brian Quick, uh, just Arthur Jones. Uh, you've got, and, and that's uh, including the offensive line, which is decimated. So for, uh, th- that that that's kind of like I, I cannot believe I stuck with the Seahawks as my Super Bowl pick, and they lost that game to that team. <laughs> yeah. A B. Wow, Kirk Cousins. Like if if, if you needed to give your agent ammunition, oh come on, as to why you need to get paid. Yeah. That was it. Uh-huh. And uh, and then see as far as this matchup, uh, I mean like look, Trent Williams obviously the key and the key in there also questionable. Um, you know they get him back they got a fighting chance. Defense is solid. Defense is good. I mean we oh yeah they're much year. better yeah. So yeah I mean uh, could, could be a could be a pick em. could be a pick 'em. I'm, I'm I'm huge on Minnesota. Normally need to see some of these injuries and if uh, if a, a couple of these guys don't play then I'm going like. All right, I'm going to go, yeah, like I guess I'm going to go with the Redskins. I'm going to take Cousins over Keenum. And uh, and look, because they probably should have beat the Cowboys until they imploded, and they had all those injuries. Then they go to Seattle, and everybody thinks they're done, and they win. So I think there's got to be something there. They, they, they're they still fighting, and that's important to note, that they're trying hard, and they're fighting, and the win, I think, is going to, for me, the win last week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them a game for that win. That's the game this week against Minnesota. Maybe they're due to lose anyway. Four game winning streak with Case Keenum. I think that's enough. All right. Uh, next up, let's go. By the way, Minnesota will be hosting the Rams next week. So that could be a really good game. Maybe that'll be Teddy Bridgewater's first start. Uh, Chargers at Jacksonville. And the Chargers coming off the bye. And uh, they played a pretty good game against the Patriots. They were on that uh, win. They had that three-game win streak as well. So they had some good vibes going into the bye, even though they lost. But they had the ball at the end of the game with a chance to tie it. So they were there. Uh, but uh, the Chargers still – this is a desperate game for the Chargers. This is kind of like why I'm leaning towards the Chargers. Uh, they they know if they're going to have a shot, they have to win this game. Uh, plus, they played better on the road this season than they have at that home uh, in parentheses, you know, in quotes, uh, stadium, uh, the Jags who I liked a lot last week came through for me. And even though they did, uh, I, I'm kind of, I, you know, you went back to back as impressively as they have 50 to seven combined. Uh, I don't know. I, I 
I think it's time for them to chill out a little bit. I don't think they're that good. Uh, they're good, uh, but I think it's I think Chargers being a little bit more desperate. And by the way, the Chargers have owned the Jags, even though this is a different Jag team. Uh, but the Chargers have beaten the Jags six straight times uh, since the 2010 season. These two teams have played four straight years. So this is the fifth straight year that these two teams are uh, playing each other. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the Chargers uh, as uh, I think I could get four points as a dog in this one. What'd you make of the Jalen Rams, the AJ Green thing? I thought, you know, like everybody else about Green, like, holy, where did that come from with AJ Green? I mean, he just lost the game. All all their beat writers are like, uh, that's the nicest guy in the league ever. Number 52 of 52 people that we would anticipate getting into a into one of those things because we've never seen it no i also though wonder whether or not a little of it has to do with the situation you know i mean because this is what i said last week i just i i did not i didn't uh, this part of the reason why i liked the jags last week i just thought the Bengals were done i think the pittsburgh game killed them because even though they won against the colts they should have lost and then they laid a dud last week i just think psychologically that pittsburgh game kind of showed them once again that they can't do it, that they just can't beat the Steelers. They can't win these big games. It's Dalton. It's Marvin Lewis. I don't think they have any confidence, and I think A.J. Green is probably losing it. Yeah, I'm I'm there with you. I mean, apparently it was trash talk that, like, went over the board, like Ramsey mentioned it today. (laughs) And it's so funny. Like, you're you're sitting there. If you're the – yeah, I mean, that's right. That's exactly what this is about. It's about the Bengals. And how frustrated they have to be having a nucleus back that's clearly inferior to six teams in in, in the AFC uh, in the AFC, and they're not going to make the playoffs. No. And like you've got somebody like really pushing past you, and I don't know what Ramsey said to him. Like he he mentioned it today, but wasn't devolved. Uh, you know, maybe all he said was, uh, "We're better than you. We're going to make the playoffs, and you're not." And that sent them off. But it, it, it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, not, no surprise that there's no suspension because uh, – Yeah, it, they it, missed the whole game. Yeah, you, you have to do a lot to get suspended in this league. Um, but, yeah, no, there, there's no question that that's a flawed team. Yeah, they, as, but as far as the Jags, uh, look, you have to really – it's I, it's so funny, though, uh, that they're having success, success, uh, success now under Tom Coughlin. And and Tom Coughlin leaves the Giants. That they actually chose Ben McAdoo over Tom Coughlin, and now the Jags are uh, are turning into a winner, and the Giants are turning into the Jags, and uh, it's uh, it's kind of funny. But uh, but yeah, I I look, I like what's going on in Jacksonville. But do I think they're going to be seven and three? And the reason I say that is because they play Cleveland next week. So do I think they're going to be seven and three? I don't know about that. I I like the Chargers in this one again. I think they're a little bit desperate. They, they have to win this game, uh, and uh, even though Fournette looks like he'll probably play this week, uh, that didn't seem to bother them. So, No, no question. Look, uh, it, it, what, what, what amuses me about the Jaguars, who I tried to adopt and couldn't, because I tried to adopt, I mean, I, I was a Vikings fan for the Dante Culpepper era, so I tried to adopt all UCF quarterback teams. Um, <laughs> and Bortles is just so awful. Oh. And like he throws the football in the end zone, uh, like uh, away most of the time. Uh-huh. Uh, hasn't played his best game yet. He, I mean, the, the game I guess in London was his best, and he was solid there. He obviously made great use of Mercedes Lewis. But if, if he picks it up, because it's not like he's a bad athlete, all that stuff is upstairs. Um, if he picks it up, that that could be a ten-win team. I mean, it, it's it's that good defensively. So another team we'll that see. needs quarterback. So there's a lot of teams that could use quarterback. I mean, we know the obvious teams that need quarterbacks, but then there's so many other teams. Like you know, the Steelers are going to have to draft quarterback. You know, the Giants now have to draft quarterback. Uh, and then you know, you go, well, the Jags have to draft a quarterback, don't they? So there's just so many teams that even though there may be five quarterbacks coming out next year, uh, you know, top guys, uh, that there's still that. That's why maybe the other thing too that hit AJ Green was is, uh, you know, may, may, you know, and here they go, they're, they're trying to unload uh, McCarron. You know, I right. mean, we talked about that. I mean, McCarron deserves a shot in Cincinnati, and they're trying to trade him. 
So, I, I, but anyway, uh, boy, McCarron. Would but probably you know, look- what's going to be great is is that the Giants and Jets will both draft the quarterback this year, and those two will be tied together forever. Like, uh, yeah, that's possible. Sure. Know. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Well, they got to get Davis no Webb in there. That's they, what that's they don't believe, like, Giants got to get Davis Webb in there. Huh? They got to get yeah, Davis no, Webb in. That, that's not gonna happen. I mean, I, I like Davis Webb uh, enough, but he's a backup quarterback. Yeah, probably. So is. There's no question that like, you're, you're going to see a Rosen Darnold type of situation there, and it, it'll be exactly like I mean, different, but exactly like. Uh, Leaf Manning and well, Rosen's uh, gonna go. Winston. Yeah, but Rosen's gonna go. He has to go uh, right now. He's got to be the first quarterback picked. I mean, he. Has I to. think so too. But uh, but I mean, who knows? And who knows? we talked I mean, about Josh we'll, Allen we'll, 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 too. I mean, Josh it, it's Allen. It's gonna be like what four eight, something like that. Giants and uh, Jets. What's that? Four uh, number four and number eight, something like oh, that. Oh, as far as picks, right. um. Yeah, I guess the Giants uh, could wind up four, yeah, and the Jets. I don't know. I mean, if the Jets go, Jets could wind up ten or twelve. You know, oh, I mean, but I will disaster. say this: even if they, <laughs> even though they, awful. even if they do end up there, they have enough ammunition now with some extra picks that if they had to move up from like twelve to seven, it's not going to cost them. You know, like it would if you have to move up from six to two. So uh, they they would trade it, and if so, yeah. So I think the Jets are fine. You know who I want anyway is Baker Mayfield, and I think I think even yeah. if they sit there at eight, I think they can get Mayfield because I think Josh Allen could get drafted ahead of him. Uh, uh, I think Rosen will be drafted ahead of him, and if Donald comes out, he may be, he will probably get drafted ahead of him. I mean, it's fantastic the way that he's he's changed the narrative on him, uh, just because he's played way better than everybody else, and I I, I love. Um, Mason Rudolph too, uh, but I mean, like the whole point. I mean, people trying to paint him in the Manziel suit, and uh, and yeah, that, that that kid not having any of it. So. That's well, that's well, but uh, again, he's, that's he's could, really good. Yeah, that could also drop him a co- to a couple of teams that that just don't want to take him. But I I just love the whole idea of Baker Mayfield in New York resurrecting the Jet program. You know, I think that'd be perfect because mm-hmm. I think he'd be perfect for that organization. Uh, and if he does keep his head on straight, I think it would be a tremendous. Uh, I think it would be a great move. So I'm I'm hoping for that. Plus, his height issues are the reason why I think he's not going to go as high as the other guys. You know, I mean, right. guys that are six feet tall don't get drafted over other guys like like Allen and Rosen. So Josh Allen will be the first pick. I'll, I'll say it right here. You okay, know. you might be right. He not is playing the, better well, now. The first quarterback taken, not necessarily the first pick. He is first, playing better now. Yeah, but if the Cleveland Browns get the first pick. How can they not take a quarterback? You know what I'm saying? They have to, because they're going to fire this, their whole organization in the off season. I would think. I mean, they have to. I know. I know. I guess, this, I know I, you know. I, I. I think. I. I. Right now, I'm definitely. Uh, I'm the. The 49ers are going winless bandwagon. The tank. Yeah, I don't think they take Garoppolo. Yeah. And I think that the, the Browns win at least one. Yeah, but if the if so, the Niners could, could could go after Barkley, so the, you know they got Garoppolo, they can draft Barkley. Right, that's true. Yeah, the, the first quarterback will go to Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. so Cleveland. Yeah, and then uh, and then who's ever after that? But uh, yeah, uh, and 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 look, Buffalo. Remember Buffalo? Everybody, you know, they're all stockpiling all these picks and giving away all these players. Uh, so they're going to need it to move up, but they'll be able to. The Bills have so much ammunition that if they want to get the first pick and give all those picks to Cleveland or San Francisco, they could do it. So, uh, all right. So next up, Miami and Carolina, Monday night football. Carolina's won two straight. Dolphins have lost two straight, nine-point spread. Uh, Carolina not playing particularly well at home, just one and two at home, and they haven't covered a home game uh, this year as a home favorite. Uh, And they're two and seven against the spread in their last seven as a home favorite. Uh, That kind of scares me a little bit with the nine number also because I can't can't tell from week to week what what to expect from the Dolphins. No, and you shouldn't. Because you're not clairvoyant. Um, yeah. I think uh, you know it becomes one of those things where Jay Cutler is getting better in that offense. They got um, Landry back, and he seems to have a nice chemistry with him. Um, you know, uh, uh, my my, my uh, Devontae Parker back, and he seems to have a nice chemistry with him and uh, Jarvis Landry, obviously. Yeah, and Carolina, so. by the way, has uh, got the bye next week. Miami will be hosting Tampa next week. Uh, by the way, Carolina twenty-five to one to win the Super Bowl. So I still can't go that way. Still don't. Uh, they're winning games. They're six and three. Maybe they go seven and three. 
I'm still not sold yet that I could believe that. Uh, I, you know what? I finally think that I'm glad that they've done is David Shula and the organization has finally stopped uh, using Jonathan Stewart as their number one running back. So they finally have started uh, making, uh, giving Christian McCaffrey more carries. That's a start. That's something smart. Yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, they're, they they figured out a way to use McCaffrey a lot more, and uh, you know that's that's really good to see. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll see if, if if the Benjamin trade ends up being uh, something that benefits them. Then I'm I color me surprised because I didn't expect it, but they they really did find a nice way to use him more, and they can always use uh, Samuel more. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. And uh, by the way, uh, third straight week that the Miami Dolphins are on prime time tv okay next up new england speaking of prime time at denver on sunday night football speaking of teams that are really psychologically damaged uh the denver broncos and how can i not be all over the patriots here as a seven and a half point road favorite uh, see this is one of those teams where see sometimes you might go yeah well sort of like we did a few weeks ago when denver played the giants and we were like well how can denver not kill the giants and some people might be going, well, how can the Patriots not kill Denver? But you see, Den- New England's not Denver, uh, so I know uh, we know how Belichick is. You know, New England will be prepared for this game. This is a rivalry situation. They're not going to be suckered in by the fact that the Broncos haven't been playing well. They're not going to be suckered in by bad tape, uh, and because of that, uh, I I'm all over the Patriots here. I mean, Brock Osweiler again. I mean, this is ridiculous. They're basically just waiting for Lynch to get healthy. Once he's ready to go, he's going to be starting the rest of the season. So they got to find out if he's the guy or else that's another team that has to draft a quarterback next year. Uh, plus, Demarius Thomas is banged up. Uh, I'm sorry, but this team is is just, I mean, one thing to lose games with Brock Osweiler or Trevor Simeon. It's another one when they start giving up 51 points. That is telling us that the coaching staff is a disaster. John Elway made the wrong move. He's going to have to fire this guy now. Get rid of them. Say I made a mistake. Move on because I there's no other explanation. But this coaching staff, and I'm not just talking about the head coach. The entire coaching staff is, is terrible. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, you're right. That's that's where we're headed with that. If it doesn't get fixed, to me, I think uh, you know this game is probably the lock of the week. And, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I hate I, I hate giving those away, but it it it, it does look like it I seems mean, like, like it. What what are we gonna see? Like, uh, yeah, to me, New England is as healthy as they've been in weeks. They they really have been. I mean, High Tower's been gone, so the defense isn't hasn't been great. But you're coming off a of bye week, you're gonna be as healthy as as possible, unless Paradis comes back. Um, the offensive line is still gonna be decimated. They still have Stevenson and Leary, uh, questionable. Uh, and, and, and yeah, if they don't get their offensive line intact, there's, there's not a quarterback in the world that's going to come through for that, that offense. So, um, you know, you, you've seen Jamal Charles been mar- marginalized because he can't do anything, uh, within three yards of t- touching the football. So um, yeah, it's, it's it's a bad football team. I mean, there's there's no way around it. With Denver. The only the only thing that I would be uh, that that if there's any hope for Denver is the fact that look, there's a lot of guys that are prideful that won the Super Bowl. They they've they've spoken out about how embarrassed they are. It's national TV. It's the Patriots. They're gonna play their butts off. And uh, will that be good enough? You know what? Maybe it will be good enough for a quarter or two. It's possible, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like Greg. I mean, like, look, we're we're gonna have Von Miller shine out, but who is the one quarterback that like yeah. doesn't get pressured? It's Tom Brady. Yeah, and we're gonna have uh, I keep believe take away a receiver who's who's the one quarterback that spreads it out most. Like, who who are you gonna take away? This is an awful matchup. Yeah, awful. Yeah. All right. Next up is Jets and Tampa. And this is look, this is a, one of those games. Like the reason why I went with the Saints easily last week wasn't necessarily because of anything other than one hot team psychologically against one damaged team psychologically, a team that should be firing their coach already. When I heard the news this week and I heard that it, that it started out with, all right, well, the announcement out of Tampa Bay, Dirk Cutter. And I really thought they were going to say was fired. <laughs> and then he says, Dirk Cutter announces that Jamison Winston will not play. And I was like, oh, OK, well, first of all, that's like three weeks overdue that we've been saying on this show. Yeah, we, I mean, we've we called this. Yeah, he should have been shutting that guy down already. 
So next up is Cutter, though. He's going to get fired. But anyway, it's obvious. I mean, it's not just Jameson Winston. They go out there. They play. They have no belief and trust within each other. The, the, the coaching staff is another joke. Uh, and now you got Ryan Fitzpatrick going up against the Jets. Uh, it's my worst nightmare watching these two, McCown and Fitzpatrick, in one game. Uh, but how about this, uh, this, this, this trend? If you ever want to – if you ever – and look, the same thing I said about the other game. I don't need to look at the trend to pick it because I, I have to take the Jets. I would take like almost every team except maybe the Niners or the Browns in this one. The Jets will win this game because the Jets psychologically are playing great. Even when they lose, they bounce back. They play hard every week. The Bucks are the exact opposite. They've given up. It's over. So in, because of that, two, two and a half point spread, I'm all over the Jets. But if you want it, a little extra incentive or proof on the trend, the Jets are 6-0-1 against the spread in their last seven. The Bucks are 0-6-1 against the spread in their last seven. And we need to start doing um, the hard knocks homework because at, at this point, this is why, like two or three that have like totally been disgusting and – and, and been paid, paid. I mean, like you could you could have retired uh, based on doing the Rams and the and the Bucks over the last couple of years. And I think it goes on further as far as like getting to know these players, and then <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people that bet on them. You know, a lot of people I I know for sure on Jameis that bet on the Buccaneers this year because they're like that's a leader, and he is a leader. But at the same time, like eating his fingers. And playing with a shoulder injury, it's been a ridiculous joke. Cutter's going to pay with his job. And then um, as far as uh, what I was looking forward to from you was the the the, the, the stamp of approval on the Jets. Yeah. I, I, I know you don't like to do that. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Bucks are done in this game. And this is the lock of the week. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I think that uh, – the way we've seen McCown play uh, is, is fantastic, and and uh, you know the Jets are going to beat up Fitzpatrick and his, his uh, desire to put the ball in the air. And, and I'm really interested to see if what happened with the Bills with the Jet defense was a one week thing, or it's the beginning of a lot of these guys gelling because we know how good Adams and May have been as rookies. Uh, I'm a big Jenkins fan, but by no means is he going to be some sort of a big time pass rusher. But he was against the Bills. Uh, even Darren Lee had a good game, which was a shock. And of course, Muhammad Wilkerson is playing like the old Muhammad Wilkerson. Uh, and then you've got Leonard Williams. So you are wondering, okay, is the jet defense now finally waking up and playing as good as their potential, uh, uh paper has them. Are you guys going to get to eight and eight and like infuriate everybody? Eight and eight. Uh, yeah, eight yeah eight. I absolutely think they can. Absolutely. Cause they're going to go five and five. <laughs> They're going to go five and five. You know, I said this in the beginning of the year on the Jet Show. I was going over this, and I was talking about how uh, – because my, my, my co-host thought I was crazy. You know, just like every other Jet person, they don't think there's going to be a terrible year. They stink. And I was going, look, right, the right. talent is there. They're not that bad. They're not the Browns, I'm telling you, or the Niners. They're not. There's talent there. Uh, I understand why why they're not where they need to be on paper, but it's it's not as bad as people think. So best-case scenario – uh, I said, and I also said this is worst case scenario that I could see happening, which is just imagine, and this could happen with my luck with the Jets, with having to deal with Ryan Fitzpatrick the last two years, that they start off, they basically go like three and five or four and four, and it buys Josh McCown another three or four weeks. And before you know it, I'm sitting here in week 12 or 13 and Josh McCown is still playing. And that's kind of the 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 good and the bad of what we're seeing right now, if you're a Jet fan, is you want them to win, but you're also going, yeah, but I, I didn't, I wasn't really sure I wanted to see Josh McCown all year. So that's kind of the good or the bad with it. Plus, like, you know, they don't get the top pick and you think about that. But look, you know, I think as we talked about, there's so many quarterbacks coming out of the draft that I just don't think it matters. I think as, uh, as long as you find some, find out, I mean, as long as you end up somewhere in the top 12. You're gonna end up with a pretty good quarterback. Um, yeah, it's gonna be like '84, I think. Oh, speaking. Of, oh, you mean when the Bucks beat the Jets? Oh, well, was it as a big draft with all the quarterbacks, or my '82, '84? No, oh, because it's funny that you said that. That that was absolutely right, dead on. The last time the Bucks beat the Jets, 1984. Oh, okay. Jets have beaten the Bucks eight straight times. So, I thought that's what you meant. And the fact that you didn't mean that 
that was pretty funny. By the way, no Mike Evans too. He's suspended. Yeah, he's done. Uh, well, I guess unless he wins his appeal, is can he use on that or no? Uh, but yeah, but why would you want to win your appeal against the Jets? I mean, you might as well just take your suspension and because uh, yeah, yeah, you, you know, uh, Jamison Winston not only out, but keep in mind their offensive line also Donovan Smith, the left tackle, uh, is uh, probably not going to play. And DeMar Dotson, their right tackle, is also banged up. All right. What is the spread on this game? Two and a half. The Jets minus two and a half? Yeah. Uh-huh. As well, they should be. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? All right. But well, they should be. The, the, you know, color us their prize. Because what, what, what would we have put this if we did one of those silly shows where we tried to project 10 weeks in advance and it would bucked by seven? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Maybe even 10. Week yeah. one, they would have been a 10-point favorite. Everybody thought this was a playoff team. And the Jets were going to go 0-16. All right, uh, let's see. Let us now go to Cincinnati and Tennessee. And uh, this is this, this is it for Cincinnati. Uh, but I don't, unlike the Chargers, I don't believe in the Bengals being, because uh, of what we saw last week, I think it's proof that this team is just, they're done. Uh, Tennessee, meanwhile, uh, they have won three straight. And as long as Mariota plays, they seem to win. Uh, and if they win this game, which I think they will, they're a four and a half point favorite. So I'll definitely take the Titans and uh, and the points. Uh, big game at Pittsburgh, uh, Tennessee at Pittsburgh on Thursday night. Well, I mean, like, look, you, you absolutely need to see Corey Davis continue to make the strides that he's making. I think that that's the difference maker from the Titans being ordinary or the Titans being great. Uh, Delaney Walker's back. Uh, and, and had a pretty solid game in his return. Questionable again, but I don't think that's anything serious. So yeah, I mean that's 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 basically what I'm looking for in terms of making sure. my mind on the Titans up. Uh, can can that offense be dynamic? Because it hasn't been. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we'll see with Corey Davis, Eric Decker now getting back in in the mix. He caught a touchdown pass. Um, Delaney Walker, if he's healthy, then then all of a sudden you have something. Yeah, Cincinnati, uh, I mean, maybe A.J. Green has a big game this week and rebounds because uh, Tennessee, uh, if you're going to beat them, you beat them through the air. Uh, also, Houston at, and the L.A. Rams. So, uh, boy, you know, I wasn't really sure what to expect from Savage because they've been a very uh, conservative offense whenever Savage was there last year. But then all of a sudden, I mean, they just – O'Brien just went nuts. I mean, he threw the ball over 40 times. Uh, I know a lot of it came in the fourth quarter uh, coming from behind, but still, uh, I mean, what did he, he completed like 40% of his passes. It's, it just shows you what a difference a quarterback makes. Uh, they lost to the Colts. Now they got to play the hot team, the Rams who have won their last two games by an 84, 17 margin. They've won three straight games. They're five and one in their last six. Uh, by the way, the Rams are now 16 to one to win the Super Bowl. Uh, the only thing is I would concern, I'd be concerned with is the points, 11 and a half. That's a lot of points. Uh, Houston has still uh, got some good players on their team, but, uh, considering, uh, they, they did not get blown out last week. Uh, maybe they're primed for a blowout this week. Books try to take games like this off the board. And normally that is because, it's, uh, what they call uh, squares or, or, or the normal betting public. Uh, like we'll be all over this game, and then they'll look at the, the spread and be like, "No, I won't touch it." So the bottom line is, this is a two touchdown favorite. Yeah. Um, and uh, we'll see. Uh, that 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 is entirely upon the team that we don't expect to be a blowout artist stepping up and becoming a blowout artist because it is. It, it does take a, a lot for a team that doesn't really dominate teams to uh. uh embrace that identity and so I, I think that's that's what we'll see well the thing when you got a team rolling like the rams offensively they they're at that spot right now in their season where you don't want to play them because yeah, they're well, uh, and yeah and, and we just saw it last week against the giants yeah. in game so we're like we're not stopping by what we yep we we got a lot of, we got a lot of things we got to see yep. so yeah no no question like uh if you're of sound mind Go ahead. Go ahead and yeah. lay the points. I mean, how can you, if you take in this game, I don't know how you take Houston. Let's just put it that way. Right. Um, now, here's a game that you wouldn't think that I would like a lot or that we should like a lot, but I do. I really like the Bears, uh, even though they're a five and a half point spread and it's a big number. Uh, I've seen enough of Hundley. 
Uh, we've talked about that since the Minnesota game. He, he didn't respond the week after against the Saints. Uh, then he gets a couple of weeks off. First drive last week. You're going, oh, okay, maybe he's got something going. Then he missed a field goal, and you don't really see anything from him. All right, he made a few plays in the game, but they, they had already lost. I, I just i am sorry. I just I'm not seeing it from him. Then they lose Balaga now. Just for the first time all season, you looked at the at the starting lineup and you went, "Wow, everybody's healthy except the quarterback. Maybe they could actually make a run if Hundley plays well." And then Balaga gets hurt and he's out for the year. Bennett right. Bennett gets cut. He's out. He's retiring anyway, so they got rid of him. I just think it's a mess in Green Bay. McCarthy's going to get fired. Uh, Chicago, meanwhile, is one of those teams that's playing for the future. They play hard every week. And here's the other reason I like the Bears a lot. Because they usually get beat up by the Packers. It's a rivalry. The Packers crushed them earlier this season when Rodgers threw four touchdown passes. That was Mike Glennon's last start. The Packers have won seven out of eight. Here's the Bears' chance to shove it right back to the Packers, and I expect them to do so. Plus, they've covered all four games at home this year. Yeah, I mean, that's a great pick. I, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from this. Um, and I, I, the reason why is because I, th- I, I anticipate more from Hungley. Like, right? he's, he's been in the system. Uh, Randall Cobb is doing his best to help him out. Uh, Randall Cobb's a former quarterback. I, you know, to me, I, I think that means a ton in terms of just like, all right, I'm going to be your number one receiver. And we have all these other options. And you're absolutely right. Like they missed that field goal, and if they hadn't, maybe his confidence is up. Um, you know, he's got another week in the system, so I'm not going to trust the Bears that out at, at, at more than that. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think Trubisky is in the same boat in terms of uh, you know you you want to see growth against a division rival that you haven't beaten. So for me, this is a no touch. It should be a, a, an interesting game if nothing else. Uh, Packers are 0-3 straight up and against the spread without Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Pittsburgh and Indianapolis. Pittsburgh favorite by 10. Uh, Steelers have dominated this series. Uh, they've won three straight the last three years against the Colts by a 124-51 to margin. Uh, they are a 10-point favorite here. Colts got their win last week. Uh, but now Davis is out for the year. Uh, Hooker's already out. Uh, Roethlisberger should be able to throw all over them. Uh, the, the Colts, when they step up in competition and play the Rams, Seattle, Tennessee, and Jacksonville, they've lost by a combined 155 to 49. So even though it's 10 on the road, uh, I, I would suspect that this is one of those games Pittsburgh is going to want to get over by halftime. Yeah, let's uh, all pray, considering I'll probably end up touching this game. Uh, let's all pray that Todd Haley, like, at least, wants to try something and doesn't win by just 10. <laughs> uh, Cleveland at Detroit and Giants at San Francisco were the final two games. And uh, Detroit, big opportunity to go five and four here, even though they've lost three straight home games. Eleven and a half points is a big number again, but we are talking about the Browns. Uh, so uh, I think uh, same thing, with, just like the Houston Ram game. If I'm taking an 11 point game, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take Detroit, not Cleveland. And San Francisco and the Giants, old, old rivals. Boy, the good old days between the Giants and the Niners. Both teams now are combined one for 16. Uh, Tank City uh, against Fired City, uh, San Francisco and the Giants. Boy, this is an ugly game. Uh, Niners, the thing I don't like about the Niners is they're 0-3 against the spread with Bethard starting by a 93-30 to margin. They were competitive with Hoyer, and they just, uh, you know, it's all tank. It's team tank. It's the reason why that they, they started Bethard. Uh, they don't care, uh, and and that's kind of uh, that's the why, reason why they want to circle up a lot. Yeah, and and that's kind of why I I'm, told you. And and I just wonder if this is, uh, if, if even though I kind of, I, I don't even know which. I'm I'm actually thinking I should take the Niners in this game because at least you kind of feel they're together, where the Giants are a mess. Right. Uh, no, no. This is a game where we tell everybody that's listening, don't touch it. No. Ignore it. Be crazy. Leave it alone. Maybe, maybe if if you're on. No, don't even play fantasy players here. <laughs> yeah. It's awful. This is this is a game that you can't predict. Like if if you think Orleans Darkwood is going to go off, and and he's Orleans, by the way. Uh, okay. Um, so yeah, no, just don't. <laughs> just leave it alone. All right, and uh, by the way, maybe Detroit gets Galladay back, so it's possible uh, he might be in the lineup this week against Cleveland. 
So even though, well, was- yeah, as, as far as Detroit goes, I mean, I think that that is could be a solid play because they're trying to price you out of it. That's the whole point. Like, um, you know, you you see it all the time in college football, and you really don't see it talked about in NFL. But if 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 I mean, if you're somebody like me that looks at it, um, you see it all the time in college football, where like it's it's very clear that a, a spread is five six points inflated uh and uh and then the whole point of it is like no that's too big no it's not too big because it's football who do you like in the super bowl right now seahawks patriots so okay I'll go with the Eagles and Patriots. I think I think what's going to happen is I think the the, the Patriots will, go, will probably be in the championship game with the Steelers, and uh, even if it's in Pittsburgh, uh, I think I think it's going to be one of those situations where pe- where people might get suckered into thinking that Pittsburgh is going to is going to win that game, and 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 they're just just sort of like the Bengals and the Steelers. Steelers just can't beat the they just can't beat the Patriots. So just like my fantasy team, Greg, I'm 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 rooting for Thomas Rawls. <laughs> Thomas Rawls. Thomas Rawls, who has run into his own center oh. on multiple occasions. Yeah, that's uh, that's a major yep. disappointment. But hey, Eddie There's Lacy's that. out, so yeah, Lacy's done. Um, you know, we'll we'll look to move forward with Thomas Rawls, and I think the Seahawks are right there with me. They they would like to see Thomas Rawls. <laughs> Well, hey, I think he's better than Lacy, so I think he actually might uh, have benefited from Lacy getting hurt. All right, so uh, that's it for Week Ten, uh, Tony. Appreciate it, uh, and uh, your uh, your NFL previews out already. Uh, TNF is out. NFL essentials now go up on Saturday because of uh, all the nonsense with injury reports and all of that. And last week didn't get up till Sunday, so depending. But yeah, absolutely, you need to check that out before you make your bets because that's. Uh, that's the final determination as to uh, who's in, who's out, and why you should bet one way or the other. Because that's exactly what uh, what you need to be on on the lookout for in week ten and beyond. All right, and enjoy those uh, big college football games too, because there's some really good ones. Uh, I think they're what you got: Georgia, yeah, Auburn, easy. Notre Dame, Miami, TCU, Oklahoma. And uh, what else? Well, those are the top Alabama, three games. Alabama, Mississippi State. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Yeah. They should cover, but it should be interesting. Yeah, good games, good college games. All right, sounds good, Tony. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you uh, next Thursday. All right, man. Excellent. All right, that's Tony Mejia. And, again, Tony is with Vegas Insider. That will wrap it up here on our lads NFL preview so don't forget to follow us on Twitter and at PrimeSN and also tomorrow our college football preview we've got uh, interviews uh, with uh, TCU writer Jeremy Clark and Hondo Carpenter writer for Michigan State football so we'll preview the big games tomorrow on OFN college football starting at 2 Eastern and also check back with us in about 15 minutes BJ Rains will be with me uh, one-on-one interview. Uh, BJ covers Boise State football for the Idaho Press Tribune. So we will see you next time, next Thursday. And by the way, check back with us on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for our fantasy football show with Jamal Murphy and Dan Weinrich. But for Tony Mejia, I'm Greg DePama. We'll see you for week, away, uh, week 11 in the NFL uh, on OFN NFL Preview. <laughs>